Kilayim. We and Darnell are not Kilayim with one what with one with the other. Barley and oats spelt and rye, beans and chickpeas, bitter peas, bitter peas, vetchling, white beans, kidney beans are not Kilayim one with the other. Okay. Also, by the way, my share with Rabbi Myers, he also said this. Everyone's saying the same thing about this time business, you know. So cucumber and cucumber and melon are not kalayim with one the other. And Rev Yehuda says, Kalayim, garden lettuce and wild lettuce, endives and wild endives, leek and wild leek, coranda and wild coranda, mustard and Egyptian mustard, or Egyptian gourd and excuse me, bitter apple or bitter beans and carob are not kalayim one with the other. Uh, turnip and radish, cabbage and cauliflower, beet and aurach are not kalayim one with the other. Rakiva added garlic and wild garlic, onion and wild onion, lupin and wild lupin are not kalayim one with the other. Okay, okay. good. Right. Okay, now we move on to trees. But um, Ilan, agasim, chrystomalium. Agasim are pears, chrystomalium are another kind of pear, I guess. Wild, um, wild kind, of, kind, of, kind, of, kind of wild pears, okay. Not kalayim. Parishim va uzradim. Um, I think quinces, we said parishim, uh, and they, call, um, they say, they say, and sorb apples are of gradum, some read agorum, a shrub bearing small apple like fruit. That's all it mm -hmm. says. Okay, so there's another pair that's not kilaim. Um, Einam kilaim is there. So <clears throat> there's a, there is a, a little bit of discussion among the Rishonim as to whether it's possible that all four of these are not, um, are not kilaim with each other. Um, but I think it's easiest, it's simplest to read them in pairs again, uh, pairs, haha, um, to, uh, but P-A-I-R. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> um, a, an apple and a chazrad. Um, chazrad is a, a wild apple, a par, uh, peaches and almonds. Interesting. You wouldn't think that peaches and almonds look similar, but if you think about it, um, if you if you've ever opened up a peach pip, right it's a, it's a, it's inside it, inside it, the, the looks like an almond, yeah. right? And um, the shazifin vaharimin, the uh, prunes, uh, plums, and rimin, uh, um, rimin is um, it's or had dimin. It's a kind of a, a lotus. It says lotus. It says uh, a rimin. Remim, some redeem him. A shrub of the lotus yeah. species bears inferior fruit. Okay. So this last set of uh, of of, um, of fruits that look similar, now that even though they look similar, they are considered kilaim, and therefore you would not allowed to graft. You would not be allowed to graft them together. Okay. Hatnon vanafot, the radish and the nafots, which is. Um, I think, uh, did we have that before the, the Nafots? Yeah, we have horseradish first. But Sanan? Uh, it's not is it's non a horseradish? Horseradish and radish. And radish. Oh, okay. Achardal um, va lafsin. So mustard and, uh, and lafsan is um, a kind of a wild mustard. But the last Ivan is imamitsis varamutsa. And the uh, Greek good with the uh, with the Egyptian um, uh, good and the remotza, um is it, that that was that that bitter good that we said you have to, you have to cook. Um, right. right. Okay. domin kilaim So though they look similar, they are nonetheless kilaim. Okay. Um, and Mishnavav hazev hakelev wolf and dog. Kelev hakufri vashual wild the well the kufri is um, a wild dog. It's a kind of a wild dog that's for that they that they used for for guarding uh, houses. It looks like a it looks like a fox. Right, right. But with the fox, ha'izim v'hatzvaim, goats and uh, and mountain goats. Ye'elim v'acherachelim. Did you say deers? Goats yeah. and deers. Goats and deers, sorry, goats and deers. Hayyaelim um, is uh, the, now that's, that's the mountain goat and the varachelim and the sheep. Sustra period, a horse and a mule, a period by chamor, or the mule with the chamor, with the donkey. Right, right. A chamor by harod, or the donkey and the arod is um, is wow. a wild a wild donkey. Apple pisha domin zelaze, kilaim zebaze. Right, so you can't crossbreed these and you can't, uh, you can't uh, harness them together to, to pull. 
that's uh, that uh, these creatures are all kilaim. So so yesterday we mostly we will learn all of the things that are not kilaim, and today most of the things we learned are the things that that are kilaim, even though they look similar. Okay, that was simple. Okay. Um, okay, Demai, hey, you the Aleph. If he gave truma from Demai for Demai, from Demai for definite tevel, it is truma. But he must give truma again from definite tevel for Demai, it is truma. But he may not be eaten until he has given truma and maestros for it. Um, let's see. If one leases a field from a Jew, from a non-Jew or a Kutian, he sets his share before them. If he rents a field from a Jew, he must take truma and give it to him. Rabbi Yehuda said, when? When he gives for him from the same field and from the same species. But when he gives him from another field or from another species, he tithes and gives him. Right, so the three, the, the three different levels. One, you can just leave it in front of him and the and truma and master is all his business. There's, there's another level where you do, you do have to take truma off before you, uh, uh, but then he, and then he can take his portion. But, uh, but, in the, but um, the most stringent is if you're paying him out of, uh, out of some, separate, uh, some separate species, then it has, you have to take master too before you, yeah. can, before you can give it to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, fine. Pay, uh, pay. Uh, no, we have one more, I think. Do we? I think we have one more. Um, it started with uh, you had Aleph, and I did uh, and, uh, Aleph Bay. So I have the uh, I, I, I have I base now, right? Well, base. Oh, you, oh, you haven't done base yet. Okay, fine. Go ahead. If one rents a field from a non-Jew, he must give him tithe and give it to him. But Yehuda says also one who leases from a non-Jew um, the field or of his father's must tithe and give it to him. Okay. Right, and we had we said there that there was a there was a penalty that we. We wanted to prevent people from uh, renting lands from a from a non-Jew because we wanted the the non-Jew to say, ah, I, I don't want this land. Nobody wants to rent from me, and he'll sell it back to to Jews in Eretz Israel. Okay, pay up base above. Okay. Um, here we are. It once happened that Rabbi Shimon of Mitzvah <coughs> sowed before Rabbi Gamil, and they came to the Gazit chamber and they asked Nachum the scribe, and they asked, Nachum, Nachum the scribe said, I received from Rabbi Meyasa, who received from his father, who received from the pairs, who received from the prophets, a law given to Moshe at Sinai, regarding the person who sows his field with two types of wheat. If he did them in one threshing floor, he gives peah, two threshing floors, he gives two peah. A field that non-Jews reaped, robbers reaped, ants have bitten, and the wind or the cattle broke is exempt. If he reaped half of it and robbers reaped half of it, it is exempt. For the obligation of payah is fulfilled with standing corn. If robbers reaped half of it and he reaped half of it, he gives payah from what he reaped. If he reaped half of it and he sold half of it, the purchaser gives payers for the whole. If he reaped half of it and it consecrated half of it, the person who redeems it from the treasury gives payah for the whole. Okay. Let's see. Mm -hmm. Gimel. Okay. Every object that contracts treading tumor contracts corpse tumor. But there can be an object that contracts corpse tumor but does not contract treading tumor. Everyone who is eligible, eligible to judge capital cases is eligible to judge monetary cases, but there can be someone who is eligible to judge monetary cases, but is not eligible to judge capital cases. Everyone who is fit to judge is fit to testify, but there can be someone who is fit to testify, but is not fit to judge. Every food that is subject to tithes contracts food tumor, but there can be a food that contracts food tumor that is not subject to tithes. Okay, I think that's three. That's it. That's three. Yeah. Okay. Um, here we go. Okay, we are in uh, Caleb. Caleb, uh, base, right? Yeah, you'd yep. base. Yeah, base. Hey. Hey. A nail that was one prepared in order to unlock and lock with it is tummy. One that is made for surveillance is tahor. A nail that one prepared in order to open a barrel with it, Rebbe Kiva rules it tummy. And the sages rule the Tahor until one hardens it. The bar of a money chamber is Tahor, but Reb Zadok rules it Tameh. There are three things that Reb Zadok rules Tameh, and the sages rule Tahor. The bar of a money changer, the chest of bean grinders, and the pin of a sundial. sundial. 
Reb Sadek rules them Tame and the Chachame rule them Tahor. There are four things that Rabbi Gamil rules Tame and the Chachame rule Tahor. The metal cover of a tenny belonging to householders and the hang, hanger of stringles, uh, stringles and unfinished metal utensils and the tray that split into two. But the Chachame agree with Rabbi Gamil in the case of a tray that split. It split into two pieces, one large and the other small. That one is Tame and the small one is Tahor. Okay, is that, that's three? I think oh. that's three, five, six, no, one more. A dinner that became disqualified and one prepared it in order to hang it around a girl's neck is Tame. And likewise, a salad that became disqualified and one prepared it in order to weigh it is Tame. To what degree may a salad become disqualified and it will still be permitted to keep it up to two dinners? Less than that, it must be cut up, uh, the coins cut up. Okay. Okay, and we now are right. uh, A tribe, a false prophet, and a Kohen Gadol may not be judged except before the Court of 71. A discretionary war may not be waged without approval of the Court of 71. Additions to the city and to the courtyards may be made only with the Court of 71. Sanhedrins for the tribes may be appointed only by the Court of 71. An apostate town may be so designated only by the Court of 71. They cannot designate an apostate town on the border, nor three, but they may so, may, may so designate one or two. The great head Sedgwick was composed of 71 judges and a lesser one of 23. From where do we know that the great one was 71? Because it says, gather to me 70 men from the leaders of Israel and Moses provided over them, hence 71. But Yehuda says 70. And from where do we know that a lesser one is comprised of 23? Because it says, and the congregation shall judge and the congregation shall save. A congregation which judges and a congregation which saves, we thus arrive at 20. From, um, from, and, and from where do we know that a congregation consists of 10? Because it says, until when this evil con congregation which excludes uh, Yeshua and Caleb. That's it, came from the, the, it came from the Paris of Samaragdim that we get the Ada. So the Ada is 10. Okay, so now we've got 20. Right, so so the reason they, they do the congregation to judge, uh, uh, which is which is made up of 20, is because we need 10 for a minion. So that's the same, the 10 and 10? No, no, it's not 10 for the minion. The 10 is from the ten is from the Miraglim, because the, the word Ada... Oh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I was going with the one before that. It says a, a lesser one is comprised of 23. Right, so we're still, we're still in the middle of the math of the 23. Okay, all right. Uh, and from where do we know that's included in other three? From the implication of that, which it says, do not follow a majority to convict. I may infer that I should that I should follow them to exonerate. If so, why does it say according to the majority? The matter shall be decided. This teaches us the decision to convict is unlike the decision to exonerate. But the decision to exonerate turns on the vote of one, while the decision to convict must turn on the vote of two. But since no court may consist of an even number, we must add a number for a total of 23. How many must be in a town to warrant a say 100? 120. Then the comma says 230, corresponding to the offices of the tens. Okay, let me see who's, who's bothering me over here with something, an emergency. Oh, I'm sorry. Can I just look at this a second? Yeah. The Kohen Gadol may judge and be judged. He may testify and he may be testified against. He may perform Kalitza and Kalitza may be performed with his wife. And Yubim may be performed with his wife. However, he may not perform Yibum because he is forbidden to marry a widow. If someone close to him dies, he may not follow the beer. Rather, once they pass from view, he may appear where they appear. He must remain concealed from view and goes with them until the entrance to the town. These are the words of Reb Meir. Reb Yehuda says he does not leave the temple as it is stated, and from the temple he shall not depart. When he comforts others, it is customary for all people to pass along the one, one after another, and the appointed one places him between himself and the people. When he is comforted by others, all the people say to him, we are your atonement, and he says to them, may you be blessed from heaven when they feed the mourner's meal, all the people sit on the ground, and he sits on a stool. The king. Rules, you need, that's it. We're okay. yeah. That's that's it. Yeah, we've done three there. I think. All right. Last. Hey, Yoma. <clears throat> Yoma. Um, <clears throat> uh, if a building a right, if a building collapsed on someone on the Sabbath and it is uncertain whether he is there or not, or it is uncertain whether he is alive or dead, or if it is uncertain whether he is Heather. He is a heathen or a Jew, they must clear the heap of debris for him. If they found him alive, they must clear the rest of the debris for him. But if he is dead, they leave him there. 
Right, because you can't be Machalal Shabbos for a mace. You can only do it for, for somebody who needs to be saved, yeah. Okay, right. A sin offering and a guilt offering for a definite sin provide atonement. Death or Yom Kippur provide atonement together with repentance. However, repentance alone atones for lesser transgressions for positive commandments and negative commandments. But for the, for the graver sins, it suspends punishment and Yom Kippur comes and provides atonement. He who says, I will sin and repent, I will sin and repent, they do not assist him in achieving repentance. If he says, I will sin and Yom Kippur will provide atonement, Yom Kippur does not provide atonement. For sins between man and God, Yom Kippur provides atonement. For sins between man and his fellow man, Yom Kippur does not provide atonement until he appeases his fellow man. This did Rabbi Eliezer ben Azari expound. From all of your sins before God shall you be cleansed. From this we derive for sins between man and God. Yom Kippur provides atonement, but for sins between man and his fellow man, Yom Kippur does not provide atonement until he appeases his fellow man. Rabbi Kippur says, Praiseworthy are you, O Israel, before whom you cleanse yourselves. Who cleanses you? Your father in heaven. As it is said, I will sprinkle pure water upon you and you shall be cleansed. And he also says the mikvah of Israel is Hashem. Just as the mikvah purifies the contaminated, so does the Holy One, blessed is he, purify Israel. And tomorrow we're on to Sukkah. Hey, Sukkah.